Yes. And that he believed in development from the ground up yes. and not the top down. Yes. Woo! Yes. And providing concrete on this boardwalk is development from the top down. Yes. And so, Mayor de Blasio, you've got to change the plan. That's right. You're a new administration. You've got to put your stamp on it. And you've got to promise the people that you have to come to them first yeah! and respect their wishes. And what they are wishing right now is for wood, That's right. solid wood, good wood, good wood. We live in a concrete city already with skyscrapers and hot asphalt. And when New Yorkers come to the beach, they don't want to be greeted by concrete, more asphalt. They want to be greeted by the sun, the sand, and a wooden boardwalk. That's right. People all over this country come to Coney Island and to Brighton Beach for a unique experience. This boardwalk is in countless number of books and movies and plays. It's in a historic place. And as someone who believes that we should preserve history, we should preserve this boardwalk. That's right. Yeah. 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 I love you. I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> it's an important piece of our identity as Brooklynites and as New Yorkers. We all know the people. We all know the city does not do a good job of listening. And we are urging the de Blasio administration to do what they promised yes. and to listen. Yeah. Just look at the bathing stations the city installed after Hurricane Sandy, which the city spent hundreds of millions of dollars on. But we are going to make sure that they listen to us today. We're not going to stand by while the city rips out a piece of our history mm. yes. and rips sure. out our heart yes. in this neighborhood. Woo. Island and Brighton Beach communities in this fight. The boardwalk is worth fighting for. Yes. Yes. Do you believe the boardwalk is worth fighting yes. for? Yes. Do you believe the boardwalk is worth fighting yes. for? Yes. Then let's stand up and fight back and stand up for a boardwalk. Okay. Uh, that the New York City controller Scott Stringer Woo! is here. Woo! Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I want to start out by thanking Councilmember Mark Traeger and Councilmember Chaim Deutsch for their tireless work on the city on behalf of the people of Coney Island and Brighton Beach. Give them a big round of applause. And as a former borough president, I know just how hard Eric Adams is working in Coney Island on preservation and resilience. And I want to thank the community activists who have fought to protect yes. the true character of Coney Island and Brighton Beach, including the boardwalk for future generations. Give the community leaders a great round of applause. Now, we all know this community was devastated by Superstorm Standing. And we are still feeling the effects of that storm two years later. I saw it firsthand when I held oversight hearings about the city's response to Sandy at Coney Island Hospital just blocks from here. But today we are here to talk about ways that we can preserve what we have to, which is to build a brighter future for Coney Island. Think about this. In 2010, 12.8 million people visited the beaches and boardwalk. The boardwalk is one of the most recognizable parts of the city's beachfront. And that's why today, I stand with my fellow elected officials here to call upon the city's landmark preservation commission yes. to take action and preserve this boardwalk. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the reason we do this is because we recognize the 100-year tradition of Coney Island. Dreams were made here. Neighborhoods were created here. The stories of the boardwalk are legendary. And yeah. the truth is, the boardwalk works. It makes a difference for people. So
So when you look at our economy, we have to make sure that we preserve what works to create jobs and a future for our people. But we also have to recognize that government sometimes gets in the way. And the promises have to be kept, especially if you're going to make them. You got to walk the walk, but you also got to make sure you get it done. And talking sometimes is cheap. So here's what we want. We want to work with everybody to make sure the Landmarks Commission does the right thing. Yes, the second yes. thing, the second thing we want to do is have a real conversation about not just preservation, but resiliency, so we protect ourselves from another storm. This is the work of Deutsch and Traeger and all the elected officials and yes. committee leaders. I stand with you. We will issue the economic data. We will work side by side with you to make intelligent responses to the questions that come up. I believe in this community, and like you, we want to make sure we preserve and we protect going forward in the future. Preserve Thank you protect. all very, very much. Yeah. Next up is uh, Assembly Member Bill Colton. We're not going to let any rain hold us up and discourage us. This is the voice of the people of Coney Island, the voice of the people of Brighton Beach, the voice of the people of Southern Brooklyn. Yeah. And we're not going to be ignored anymore. Yeah. We're not going to be ignored anymore. Because what people feel and what people think and the concerns of people is important. Coney Island matters. Yes. yes. Brighton yes. Beach matters. Yes. Yes. Southern Brooklyn matters. Yes. And we got to get that message all the way to City Hall. Yes. They have to start listening. This boardwalk has been here for all of our lives and more. Generations have walked this boardwalk. And it's made our neighborhood prosper. It's made our neighborhood have many precious moments of families moving together, walking together, recreating, businesses profiting their families. This boardwalk is important. That's right. And we don't want a sidewalk. We want a boardwalk. That's right. Yeah. What do we want? A boardwalk. He made promises that he is going to listen to people, yeah. that he's going to listen to neighborhoods. Well, this neighborhood is speaking, and we're going to speak as loud and as long as is necessary till City Hall hears us. Yes. That's right. yes. So I also want to thank the two council representatives here, yeah. Councilman Mark Traeger and Councilman yeah. Ron Dorch. scare them off. Nothing can back them off. Not rain, not powers that be. They are here for this neighborhood and we commend them for that. And I want to commend our citywide officials. Controller Scott Stringer. Public yeah. advocate Tish Jane. Yeah. They're here today and we need to remember that. They're here doing their job That's being good. your voice. Borough yes. President Eric Adams. And Borough no. President Eric Adams. Yeah. Council. We have the Brooklyn Borough President here. He's here being your voice. And we have two citywide officials here. Right is on your side. Yes, yes. Right is on your side. Yes. What do you want? Boardwalk. What do you want? Boardwalk. And boardwalk is what we're going to get. Right. And we're going to get the man right. to hear that. Thank you very much. Uh, we
would be remiss if we don't hear from a few people from the community. Yes, yes, yes. These community representatives have been on this fight as, I mean, not just this fight, but so many fights that are so important to Brooklyn. First person I'd like to bring up is Ida Sanoff. Ida! 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 I would like to thank not only all of our citywide elected officials who came and who've spoken already, but I also see District Leader Harry Kagan here, yeah. 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 District Leader Nancy Tong, yeah. and I see people from Brighton Beach and people from Coney Island, and there are people here from Sheepshead Bay, and even people from Rockaway. Yeah. And Republican district leaders also too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we eat a Republican when we do magic and party lines. One of the things that no one has really spoken about is safety. And we saw a tremendous difference in storm surge impacts where there were concrete sections as opposed to wooden sections. And this is going forth, this so called concrete plan is going forth without any environmental studies, without any engineering studies, without any thought to the safety of this community and the damage that we suffered during Sandy. And in fact, there's the remains of an old concrete walkway called the Esplanade down near the eastern end of Brighton Beach. And during Hurricane Sandy, the slabs, the remaining concrete slabs, there's the picture, lifted up and actually poked holes in apartment buildings. So this is not just an issue of history and what's better to walk on because a wooden surface is much easier to walk on and it's cooler and it's what makes the area the area, but this is an issue of safety and the protection of our homes and our communities. And we want to see that addressed. Thank you all for coming in this terrible right. weather. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Next up is a uh, a true warrior in these battles. Again, tireless people in Brooklyn. You guys tirelessly fight for these things. Rob Bernstein. Yeah. First, I want to thank from the bottom of our hearts, I know I speak for everyone here, our public officials for coming out and standing with us. Let's give them a round of applause. Yay! Thank you. By the way, I don't remember, is it Mayor Bloomberg still in office? Because it certainly seems like it to me. We were promised, we were promised community consultation before a project takes place. So let me tell you how much community consultation there has been with the two communities here, Brighton Beach and Coney Island, that share this wonderful boardwalk. For four and a half years, we have been asking the Parks Department to come and meet with us. They will tell you we've consulted with the community. Here's the sum total of their cons consultation with our community. Three appearances at uh, community board meetings, each time they changed the plan and when it was finally resoundingly voted down each time, they never showed up again and we couldn't get their ear. Our councilmen worked tirelessly with the new administration to get Eric Silver out here in advance of anything being done. They had a meeting scheduled for September. What happened? He was off somewhere doing something that was canceled. In the most insulting charade of community consultation, two days before the end of, the, of last year now, we were told tomorrow, come to this meeting. Now most people were away to begin with, but that's not the half of it. We come to the meeting right here at the YMCA, and we're having a discussion. And I'm thinking, what are we talking about? Even as they're asking our opinions, they're ripping out the boards. That's right. an absurd concept of community right. consultation. Two other points I wish to make. Some people will say, why do you care if the substructure as well as the decking structure is concrete? The decking, okay, some people can understand because you walk on it, you run on it, people seek out wood as a respite from the concrete we all live with. The reasons are three. One is people's use. If you walk on concrete, 
it feels like concrete. And if the substructure is concrete, and if you have wood on top of that, or plastic or whatever, there's no give. So essentially it feels like concrete. That's reason number one. Number two, if the substructure is a concrete slab, as they already put in by Ocean Parkway years ago in 2009 when they got stimulus funds without consultation, what happens is that will deteriorate prematurely because precipitation and debris gets caught in between the top and what's just below it. And through expansion and contraction, it will be destroyed. So we don't want that. Thirdly, safety, important for obvious reasons. When they talk about resiliency, if you look down the beach, the building that's right there, the white building at the end, is where these pictures are from. In Hurricane Sandy, it punched a hole in through a small window that was there, and this are the remnants of a path that was there connecting Brighton Beach to Manhattan Beach. So when they talk about safety, that's a ridiculous thing to say when they've done no studies. We live here. We've seen the results. This is one result. At Ocean Parkway, we have proven more erosion than anywhere else where there was wood. So thank you very much, and I'm going to leave it to our group, meaning our electives and ourselves, to work together and fight this fight and make sure we maintain a true boardwalk out here. Thank you. Yeah. We have been joined by Council Member Vincent Gentili, and he will say a couple of final words. Yay. Wow, wow, with this turnout today in this weather, that means we are determined. It, it may be daunting, but we are downright determined to make sure this boardwalk stays as a, a wooden plank. And I want to thank everybody here. You know, Madam uh, Public Advocate, I think if, if, if they put some, if they put concrete here, I think we should put in a budget uh, plastic uh, trees for Central Park, right? <laughs> why not? You don't have to maintain plastic trees, right? So why not? We should, uh, if it's good enough for us, it should be good enough for them in Manhattan, right? So I wanted to come by just to tell you that you have support from my neck of the woods in Brooklyn. It's good to see our, our borough president representing all of Brooklyn and all our uh, citywide officials here today, uh, our, our controller and our public advocate saying we're united that this is a landmark, should be a landmark, and we need to keep it that way. It is Brooklyn history. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. We just have a couple more speakers, and then we we just want, want to do one final nice photo off with everybody. I, I want to bring in um, Tim Keaton from Rainforest Relief, who has been a very staunch supporter and advocate, not just in New York City but all over, providing very uh, important data on these issues. Tim, come on up. <clears throat> Thank you. And I have to say, it's very impressive to see this many people out in, in this weather. Uh, I, I will say that had we uh, been able to rally this amount of support to stop the city's use of Amazon rainforest wood, uh, you know, 10 years ago, we would have we would have been able to deal with this uh, a long time ago and come up with solutions uh, a long time ago. I would like to actually say that we appreciate the Parks Department has taken tropical hardwoods finally off the table and, and is looking at alternatives. However, uh, as, as someone who's advocated for alternative materials for the boardwalk since 1995, uh, one thing we have never suggested is concrete or a concrete slab underneath the decking. Both of these are, are bad ideas. It's not a really good way to build a boardwalk in my opinion and we've seen major major maintenance problems cropping up when parks department has done this uh, with concrete slab underneath decking boards we've been calling for an open air boardwalk using recycled plastic lumber structural plastic lumber for the understructure of the boardwalk and that is very feasible closing the loop of our recycling system uh and and, and Recycled plastic lumber in the understructure will last virtually forever. They will never have to replace that understructure ever again. It simply does not rot. 
So they're using it for decking now. That may or may not be a good thing, but putting any of this down on concrete slab is a bad idea. So we're, we'd really like to see Parks Department, now that they're getting away from Rainforest Wood, truly build a sustainable, safe, and durable boardwalk. We think we have the, the ideas to do that. Uh, unfortunately, Parks Department's history is not to listen to us uh, very closely and take a very, very long time to finally come around to our ideas. Now's the time for them to listen right now to our ideas for the way, the right way to build the boardwalk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. All right, just a couple more. Again, we have to hear from the community. Sorry, gang. Arlene Brenner, where are you? Uh, come on up. Come on, darling. Woo! Again, tireless advocates. Tireless. 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 These things are almost yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we know why we voted for these politicians who are here today. Uh, please applaud these fabulous people who are here today. Yeah. And we know who we're not voting for next time. Get it? Do you get it? Yes. Bloomberg's gone. Come on, de Blasio. We voted for you. What happened? Why didn't you listen to us? Why are you listening to the old Bloomberg uninformed advisors? Liar. That's who he is. De Blasio out. De Blasio out. Stop, stop. Um, I don't remember what else I wanted to say. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye. Yay. All right. All right. Next up, we'd like to uh, have say a couple of fine words is former Assemblywoman Adele Cohen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, why, why don't we just move Why don't we just move it away? I'm too short. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, no. I never liked a podium anyway. I want to talk about something nobody here has talked about yet. You all talked about the good reasons that we need to fix the boardwalk, the history, the uh, easy on your feet, and all the other stuff. No one's talking about the real reason. The real reason is money. Yes. Right. yes! The real reason is that in my memory, and my memory goes back a very long time on this boardwalk, I was first elected to the assembly in 98, and I was out here before then. The Parks Department has uniformly treated the boardwalk with disdain. Yeah, the true. Parks Department, when I would say, you know, the boards are coming up, they'd say, well, Howard Golden, you know how long ago Howard Golden was borough president? <laughs> Howard Golden would give us his discretionary money. Well, the new guy didn't want to, and he didn't have to. That's why it's called discretionary money. Marty bit, took care of the parachute jump. But the boards kept coming up, and every time we mentioned it to them, they'd say, well, we don't have any money for the boardwalk. Strange, they had money to build a boardwalk in Brooklyn Bridge Park where the rich people live. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. I'm totally appalled when I saw that. And I think Vinny's idea of the plastic trees totally mirrors what's happening here. But I'm going to turn to my former colleague, Mr. Colton, and say you are the only rep from the state. The money that's being used to destroy this landmark is state money. So I'm asking Mr. Colton to go, please, on behalf of this community, which he does not represent but chose to come here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to ask the speaker to take this money out of the budget. Yeah. No money, no concrete. It's real simple. And I'm going to talk to the controller. I already did while I was standing next to him. Because I know. She always has. <laughs> I said, you know, can't you stop this money somehow? It must come through the city budget somehow. We'll work with and you. then we will have be able to perhaps embarrass the parks department, God help us, and get this thing done properly. And I do thank you all for your attention. Yeah, you're down. Thank you. We are almost done. Two last people. I want to say one thing. This is just the beginning. If anyone thinks that this is just going to happen between in those five blocks, you have to have your head examined, because obviously this is an incomplete design with starting out there they are they are eventually going to move
speaking for the Coney Island re residence is Ann Valdez. Where are you? Yay! Yay! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you may have seen me on TV, some of you may not have. You may have passed by me. My name is Ann Valdez. I was born and raised in Coney Island. I know Coney Island like the back of my hand. If you haven't already noticed, right after Hurricane Sandy, all of a sudden everybody decided they want to change Coney Island. They want to redevelop. Well, we don't want all the redevelopment that they speak of, all right? No one is talking about the fact that we have community gardens that are being torn apart or right. forgotten about. The community gardens is also what helps to keep the water from coming into the homes. They talk about they want to do resiliency, but yet they put temporary boilers that are natural gas. There is no such thing as natural gas unless what comes out of the other end. All right? Now, what I want to say is I want all of our public officials to not just sit here and make this a photo op or an opportunity for people to see your faces. I want you to really think about what's going on. I also have a community garden in Coney Island on 29th Street, right across the street from the Y. That community garden helped to hold back a lot of the water that would have really flooded more of Mermaid Avenue. I live right across the street from Gravesend Bay. And had it not been for the way that the buildings were made and the, the height of some of the sidewalks, Gravesend also would have been destroyed. But because it's solid, it didn't get destroyed. Only our electrical system got destroyed. There's a lot that needs to be done. When you speak of Parks Department, Parks Department forgot about a lot of things. If you happen to notice, if you go into any public housing and you look at their uh, parks for the children to play in, it's an atrocity. These children cannot play there safely. There is nothing safe, especially when you get to the west end of Coney Island. So please, stop forgetting about what's going on and stop thinking of the dollar signs because in the end, the dollar signs that you're investing to supposedly beautify are the dollar signs you're going to have to pay in lawsuits for people getting hurt. Thank you. Our last speaker, our last speaker. Our last speaker is somebody you probably know very well. Steve Harrison. Hello, everybody. We all know wood is good. Wood is good. We know concrete, no good. Okay. We learned about safety today. But all of us that live along the South Shore, we don't need to study. We know what's better. We saw what's better. We lived it firsthand. We know exactly what to do. And beyond all the money that the controllers spoke about and our great councilman Deutsch from Sheepshead Bay and all the other elected officials, the tourism dollars, the people that come down and visit, whether it's near or far, from around the city and surrounding neighborhoods like we come in Sheepshead Bay, we're not coming here to walk on concrete. We're coming here to walk on a boardwalk like people do on the Jersey Shore and like they do along California and like they do along the Carolinas and they do on the boardwalks down in Florida. They don't come to walk on concrete. It's that simple. And that does equal more dollars. That does make it more valuable over and above the safety. So I got you to think. I have one question for everybody to think about. Nobody said it. I'm going to say it. I wish Channel 4 was still here. When you go home tonight, who's got that concrete contract? Somebody's uncle, somebody's cousin, somebody's brother-in-law. I don't know. But that should be looked into also. We're going to investigate. We should follow it. So wood is good. It is good. Yes. Wood is good. <laughs> Guys, let's get everyone a group picture with all of our signs and chants. Let's go. Right, everyone that way. Picture right now. Oh, you got a Russian. Yeah, we have Russian.